Dustin is a widowed man living alone in his house. One day, the doorbell rang. Dustin went up to open his door, and right there, there she was, his Uh-oh. wife. How's it possible? I hope you kept your eyes wide open for this one. Look, there's a photo of Dustin and his wife on the wall. His wife has a birthmark on her cheek. The woman that just appeared doesn't have it, so it must be Dustin's wife's twin sister. Dylan was grounded, and he wasn't allowed to meet even his girlfriend for a week. One evening, when Dylan's mom returned home from work, she found Dylan in his room and asked him if he'd met anyone that day. Dylan said that he'd been at home, studying all day. His mom didn't believe him. Why? Look, there's a lipstick stain on his neck. I'm pretty sure his girlfriend came over for a short visit. Another grounded teenager, Eslin, wasn't allowed to see any of her friends for two weeks after failing her history test. One night, her mother had a night shift and only returned home next afternoon. She came to check on her daughter, and she knew immediately that Eslin had a friend over for a sleepover. How did she figure it out? Examine Eslin's room carefully. Two plates, two cups, two forks. She wasn't the only one eating dinner in her room last night, and she wasn't smart enough to clean up after. Smells like two more weeks to me. Miss Virginia Dell is a rich young lady who had a beautiful and expensive jewelry collection behind a glass in her dressing room. One morning, she found that someone broke the glass and stole her jewelry. Miss Dell's cleaning lady claimed that she had cleaned the room at around 5 a.m. and the jewelry was still there. Virginia's best friend, who was staying in her house that week, said that she had never even walked in the dressing room. Virginia's cousin, who was also staying with her for the holiday, said that she'd walked in the dressing room in the morning but hadn't paid any attention to the jewelry and for sure hadn't stolen anything. Who is the liar? It's the cleaning lady. Seems like right after she broke the glass and stole the jewelry, she wiped off the pieces of glass while cleaning as well because there's no shattered glass on the floor. Okay, here's another task for you to test your observation skills. I'll show you two people and some items. Your task is to guess which person the item belongs to. Let's start off easy. What about this stethoscope? Well, it should definitely belong to this doctor on the right. Two more people. Any guesses who the owner of this bracelet is? The bracelet has a name engraved on it, Sophia. This girl on the left has a name tag with the same name, so it must be her bracelet. Next up, this lipstick. There are two girls who are possible owners, but what's your best guess? Who does it belong to? It must be this girl. Both of them are wearing lipstick but this girl has the exact same shade as the lipstick itself. Earring and two girls again to choose from. Any guesses? It must be this girl. Her ears are pierced and the other girls aren't. The next item is the hair dryer. Who do you think it belongs to? It must be this girl's dryer. She has long hair, and the other guy is bald. Okay, this one is more fun. The next one we have to place is this cute little cat. Who do you think is its owner? See that this girl's legs are a bit scratched? They give her away completely. It's her cat. 
One last item for you to place. This time it's a photograph of the owner in her teenage years with her parents. Who do you think it belongs to? The teen in the photo is a redhead with green eyes. There's just one redhead girl with green eyes, and here she is. It must be her photo. Esme was having a walk in the forest and got lost. She came across a witch's house and asked her to take her home. Five doors appeared. <laughs> only one of them will take you home, and you only have one chance. The right door is black. It's not next to the leftmost or the rightmost door. It's not the door in the middle either. Which door should Esme choose? There are just three black doors, and it's one of them. It's not the door next to the leftmost or the rightmost one, so the fourth door is eliminated. It's not the middle door, so it's out too. Esme should walk out the door on the left. Nico woke up in a dark dungeon without remembering what happened. She looked around and saw a metal door. Unfortunately, it was locked, and it required not just one password, but four. Aiko had only one attempt to make it right. Gladly, next to the door, there was a sign with four words. Apple, bread, chair, and dress. Which word belongs here? Pay attention to the shapes of each password. Some letters are bigger than others, and each word should fit right in. So it should be bread on the top left, apple on the top right, dress on the bottom left, and chair on the bottom right. In a factory, a worker and a half make a chair and a half in one hour and a half. How many chairs does one worker make in one working day, which is six hours? If one and a half workers make one and a half chairs in one and a half hours, it means that one worker makes one chair in the same time, which is one and a half hours. So in a six hour working day, one worker makes four chairs. It was a lazy day, but as soon as it started raining, a city's police officer got a call. Mr. Jones said that someone had just bumped into his car and drove away. The officer arrived. They found one person nearby fixing his car's tire. Mr. Jones said that it was the gentleman who had bumped into his car. The gentleman said that it couldn't be true, since he had been trying to fix his car for over an hour now and was there the whole time. Who is lying? It's the guy fixing his car. The rain just recently started. If he'd been fixing his car the whole time, the ground underneath his car would be dry. But it's wet, which means his car broke down just recently, probably when he was driving away after the accident. A crew of pirates arrived at a deserted island in the Caribbeans at night. In the early morning, the captain went ashore to find his secret stash with all the treasures hidden in it. But when he reached it, the treasures weren't there. Someone from his crew had gone ashore earlier and stolen all of it. There were three suspects, Bill, first mate, Gil, Bosun, and Will, Cook. All of them denied stealing anything, but the captain knew who was lying. Who? There are footprints on the shore from earlier that don't belong to the captain. One is a footprint, but the other one is a hole from a stick. The robber must be Gil, the bosun, because he is the only one with a wooden leg. Let's start with training your eyes a bit. Can you find an odd one out here? Yes, that's the one! Another one for you. Look carefully, and you only have several seconds to find the imposter. That's the one! Correct! Now the game is getting a bit harder, but I know you've got it. What do you say? Here it is. Did you find it? 
Okay, last one of these, the hardest one. Do you see the odd one out this time? There it is! Great job! Now Anna had just graduated from college and was in the process of searching for a job. She was going to apply to a few companies, and she wanted her CV to be perfect to increase her chances. So she checked it once again before sending it. There were three mistakes in her CV, including typos. Can you help the girl spot them? Take a look at the year when she graduated from college. In her CV, it says 2922, but that's not possible. So she must have typed 9 instead of 0 here. Now look at the education section. She wrote university instead of university. That's the second typo. And the last typo is in the skills section. That's right, the word skills itself is misspelled. A week later, Anna was invited to stage 2 of the application process in three different companies. The first one was a packaged food company called Packed Inc. The second one was a tech company called Data Corp. And the third one was a media company called Watch TV. But only one of them is Anna's dream job. Can you tell which of these companies it is? Take a look around her room. You'll notice that there's some merchandise from Data Corp. Anna has their sticker on her laptop, and there's a Data Corp mug on her table. But most importantly, do you see that post-it note on her mirror that says goals? Her number one goal is to get a job at Data Corp. If the first two hints didn't convince you, this certainly will do. The talent recruiter of Data Corp soon called Anna. She said the girl would pass stage 2 of the application process if she guessed her name correctly. But of course, I will give you a hint, she said. My name is 2 of 7 Chicago, 2 of 6 London, and 1 of 9 Edinburgh. What? Can you tell what the talent recruiter's name is? Two of seven of the word Chicago gives you the letters C and H. Two of six of the word London are the letters L and O. One of nine of the word Edinburgh gives you the letter E. So, her name is Chloe. Chloe informed Anna that she had passed stage two and the company was inviting her to San Francisco for a face-to-face -face interview. That was stage three of the application process. Oh my God. The recruiter also said that the company was going to cover all of her expenses if she answered this next riddle correctly. There is a house. One enters it blind. One leaves it seeing. What is it? Do you know the answer? It's a school. And Anna answered correctly. On the day of the interview, Anna arrived at the airport too early. She was hungry, so she decided to eat something. There were only three restaurants open at the airport. The first one served only different kinds of salads. The second one sold various types of pizza and pasta. And the third place was a seafood restaurant. Which restaurant should she choose? Take a look at their displays. There are ants inside one of the salad bowls that are on display in the first restaurant. Pass. A few of the fish in the third restaurant's display look rotten. It's probably not a good idea to eat there. So she should choose the pizza and pasta restaurant. Anna entered the place and ordered meatballs and spaghetti. As she was waiting, three friends who were eating at another table caught her eye. They all looked like very rich people. But Anna could tell that only one of them was so rich that she could literally buy anything she wanted. Can you tell how Anna figured that out? First, take a look at the menu board on the wall. All the prices are listed there. And now, look at what each girl is eating. The first one is munching on Neapolitan pizza. The price for this dish is listed as $25.
The second girl is eating pineapple pizza, which costs $39.99. The third girl, though, is trying Pizza Royale, which is made with 24-karat gold topping. Look it up, it's a real thing. And its price is $4,000. That's a lot, even for an airport restaurant. So the third girl must be the richest one. Mm. It was time to board the plane. The company spared no expense to get Anna to San Francisco with comfort. So she was going to fly business class. As one of the flight attendants showed her to her seat, she told Anna that she was very lucky to be on this flight because there was a very famous actor on board, and he was sitting next to her. Can you tell which of these people is the actor? See that guy holding his cell phone? Take a closer look at the screen. He's on his social media, sharing a selfie he took with that guy, who must be the famous actor. And now, put that cell phone on airplane mode. Time to go! After the plane landed in San Francisco, Anna headed directly to the Data Corp's headquarters for her interview. She told the security guard that Chloe was expecting her for a job interview. Hello. After checking the guest list to confirm her words, mm. the security guard gave her a name tag. Here, take this. All guests have to wear it, he said. Mm. Then he gave her a card. You need to go to the seventh floor to meet her. This card has the passcode to call the elevator. Good luck with everything. Just as Anna was going to thank him, oh. he interrupted her and continued talking. And keep this in mind, the elevator will help you ascend in an orderly way. Anna thought, okay, weird. What can that even mean? Hmm. Then she walked up to the elevator. There were no down or up buttons, just a passcode panel. Then she looked at the card the security guard had given her and saw a picture of a funny face. Hmm. There were three numbers hidden in that image, and they were the numbers she needed to press on the panel. Can you see them? There's a 7 here, a 3 is here, and here's number 1. Okay. But in what order should she press them? Hmm. Can you help her? Remember the weird thing the security guard said? He actually gave Anna a hint. The elevator will help you ascend in an orderly way. Ascend. Order. So, she needs to enter the numbers in ascending order, from the lowest to the highest. It means that the passcode is 137. Ah, here comes the elevator. Anna pressed the button for the 7th floor, but the elevator stopped on the 2nd floor. Three people were going to get in. Anna was excited to see some Data Corp employees, but one of them didn't actually work there. Can you tell who? Remember what the security guard said about all guests having to wear name tags? This lady has one too, so she is a guest and isn't working there. Anna got off at the seventh floor and was greeted by Chloe. The woman directed her toward the manager's office. Anna walked in. Hello, Anna. I'm Edith, the manager said. I'm the one who's going to interview you since you are applying for the manager's assistant position. I saw your CV and I was impressed. You've been solving all the riddles correctly, too. I have one last riddle for you, and if you crack it, we'll hire you. Oh my god! I'm a bean, but I'm not magic. I can be roasted, but I'm not a turkey. I can be ground, but I'm not pepper. I can be pressed, but I'm not a button. What am I? Quick, help Anna get this job. The answer is coffee. And you're going to be bringing me a lot of it. Welcome to Data Corp, Anna, Edith said. (laughs) Wow, that's one weird job interview. (laughs) You can see two women in the elevator. One works in this building, while the other came here for an interview. Can you guess which one works here? The woman on the right has a name tag on her jacket, while the one on the left has none. Can you spot an odd pineapple here? (laughs) 
It's this one in the corner. It has three leaves, while all the rest have four. Okay, let's make it harder this time. Do you notice anything weird in this picture? Hurry up! A tap coming right out of the tree doesn't look right, and a purple coconut looks sort of off, right? You've got three desserts before you, but only one of them is safe to eat. Can you choose the right one? The strawberries with whipped cream may seem delicious, but those tiny flies scream that this dessert is off. Next, you've got a muffin, but there's a worm in the cherries on top of that muffin. So, ice cream is the safest option. Now let's see how sharp your eyes are. How many numbers can you see? The numbers on the screen are 1, 2, 3, 7, 5, 0, 8, 6, 9. Look at these three paintings and try to tell which one is fake. The second one, it's labeled as having been painted in 1950, but there's a lion looking at a smartphone in it. How could there be smartphones back then? You're lost in the woods, cold, and so very hungry. Suddenly, you walk out to a clearing where you see three cozy looking houses. Check your survivor's instinct. Which one do you think is safe to enter? The house on the left has a big lock on its door, and its windows are boarded up. There's just no way you can get in. The second house looks safe at first glance, but look at the snow. Bear footprints are leading to its porch. It wouldn't be nice to become a dinner for a hungry bear now, so your safest bet would be the third house. Who's not very smart out of these two guys? Well, giving your cat a wash from time to time isn't that bad, although the kitty sure wouldn't like it. So the guy on the left is doing fine. As for the one on the right, look at the pet food package in his hands. He's giving his dog cat's food. This stuff shouldn't be confused. Can you spot what's wrong with this image? The woman sitting in the armchair has two different slippers on her feet. The painting on the wall seems to be from two different time periods at once. Hmm. There's a Victorian-era man with a digital camera hanging from a strap on his neck. Which of these three pictures has something wrong in it? The second one. The girl in it is eating her soup with a fork. One of the kids in the picture snuck out of the bedroom through the window at night and came back. Who was it? The one in the lower right corner still has their shoes on. One of these people going abroad is suspicious. Who? The woman on the right is going to Indonesia, but she's got a warm coat and a scarf packed in her suitcase. Are you willing to bet who's going to win in this rope pulling contest? If you placed your bet on the right hand team, you've got it. There's more than one person on their side. They're just hidden outside the frame. Can you figure out how many interviews this guy already attended this month? Oh, no. He's done five out of six. There are six post-it notes on the calendar, but a little movable square indicates the current date is on the 26th. His next interview is on the 28th. This room has something wrong, but I can't see it. Can you?
there's a bird in the fish tank. Which hand is the odd one out? It's the third one, the only right hand here. The rest are lefts. There are three people in the science lab, but one of them is not who they want the others to believe they are. Who is it? It's the guy on the right. He's wearing a fake ID badge on his lab coat. This hall is full of extravagantly dressed guests, but one of them is more extravagant than the rest. They're a ghost. Can you spot them? Look at the woman on the left. Her feet are almost transparent. She must be the ghost. This one will require both your observation skills and logic. Which of the two teapots can hold more tea? The one on the left is taller, but the one on the right is broader, so they can hold an equal amount of tea. Still, the taller one also has its nose at the same level as the broader one, which won't allow it to be filled to the brim so the right teapot can hold more tea. Which one of these three people came to this cafe not alone? It's the girl behind the table in the middle. She has two cups of tea in front of her. One of these three partygoers has recently escaped prison and hasn't gotten rid of all the evidence. Can you figure out who it is? It's the guy on the right. He still has handcuffs hanging from one of his hands. An art exhibition owner has sold a painting to a private collector. He said it was a work of an unknown 18th century artist. But the next day, the disgruntled buyer returned the picture to the exhibition owner and demanded his money back. Can you tell why by looking at the picture? Well, there shouldn't be an airplane in the painting if it was genuinely from the 18th century. Someone broke into a house in a rich neighborhood and got away with a lot of valuables. The police had a suspect and stopped by his home. The suspect said he hadn't left his home since the day before, but the police officers knew he was lying. Can you guess why? Look at the helmet on the bike's handlebar. It's upside down. Since it was raining so hard, it would have been already filled with water to the brim if it hadn't been hanging like this since the day before. A police officer approached a man sitting in a car parked next to a hotel's front door and issued a parking ticket. Hmm. The man was outraged, saying he'd been there for no more than two minutes, and the sign said five minutes of staying was allowed. Still, the officer was adamant that the man wasn't telling the truth. Why? There had been a heavy snowfall and just too much snow on the man's car hood and roof. If he had arrived just two minutes before, the snow would have been blown away by the wind or melted. There are three passports before you, but only two of them are real. Which one is fake and why? The right one is fake. Passport photos should be taken against a white background, and this one has something else in it. Which of these two people here is asking for trouble? Surfing is not the safest of sports, but if this girl is a professional surfer, she's fine. <laughs> the man with loud music coming out of his speaker isn't safe though. Loud sounds such as shouting or music can cause an avalanche in the mountains. Jason says he's just returned from a trip to Antarctica and he's showing his friends photographs taken there. They seem all right, but one of Jason's friends thinks he's lying. Why? Look. 
look at Jason's face. He has tan lines from the sunglasses. Emma came to the office on Monday and found out that someone had deleted an important report from her computer. She knew that in the company, there were three people who would be happy if she lost her job. Emma loved reading detective novels and even wanted to become a private detective when she was younger. That's why she knew she had to question the suspects. Laura, Emma's colleague, said, I've just arrived. Phew, the weather is awful. Such a downpour. Why are you asking me? Thomas, the accountant, answered, I was out getting coffee and I just returned. And Elisa, a new employee, said, I had a meeting with a client in a cafe. I've just come back to the office. Who might have anything to do with Emma's report? Eliza, pay attention to the suspect's feet. Thomas's and Laura's shoes are wet. They got caught in the rain, but Eliza's high heels are perfectly dry. She must have lied about going out to meet with a client. Emma found this strange. To confirm her suspicions, she decided to watch Eliza, but the very next day, the girl disappeared, along with some very important documents. Emma's boss asked her to help him return the documents. He didn't want to inform the police yet. Despite all, Emma was happy. She could fulfill her dream of becoming a detective. Eliza's computer was protected with a password. After an hour of failed attempts, Emma finally noticed a piece of paper on the floor under Eliza's desk. She picked it up. I'm made up of two words joined together. I'm a dish. My first half is a famous genre. My second part is a grain. What am I? The answer to this riddle might be the password, but what is it? Popcorn. Emma managed to start the computer, and soon enough, she found a map with some coordinates. Time for some action. The map led her to a modern building. It was a gym. She entered and asked the receptionist about Eliza. But the woman refused to tell her anything unless she brought a guest pass. Once inside, Emma decided to explore the place. At one point, she entered the showers for ladies. She immediately realized something was off. But what exactly? See that man reflected in the window? Who is he? And what is he doing here? Emma was about to run out of the showers when everything went black. When she woke up sometime later, she realized she was in a small room without windows. There was a door with a combination lock. In her hand, she was clutching a note. Spelled forward were those rodents that terrify you. But what you need is spelled backward. You can't touch it, but you can see it at night. What is the password? The rodents the note speaks about are rats. Then the word Emma needs is star. The girl managed to open the door. She rushed out of the room but stopped abruptly. She saw a large armchair. A man was sitting in it. It was the man from the showers at the gym. Here you are, he exclaimed cheerfully. I admit that at first I wanted to bring your boss down, but I've changed my mind. I want to play now. If you crack all my riddles, I'll give you the documents and let you go. Emma had nothing to do but agree. The man said, See, I have a room filled with gold. Once, three thieves sneaked into that room, but only two of them walked out. After they left, the room was empty. So, where was the third thief? The third criminal was in a wheelchair. He didn't walk. He rolled out of the room. Good job, the man shouted and pressed some buttons on the armrest of his chair. Emma screamed as she felt herself falling through the floor. It was pitch dark in the basement. Suddenly, a torch on the wall lit up. Emma saw three doors. Behind the first door, there was a dense jungle full of dangerous creatures. Behind the second door, there was a gigantic fire-breathing dinosaur whose breath could burn through any kind of material. And behind the third door, 
there was a lake filled with ice water. The water was so cold it needed just a few seconds to freeze literally anything. Which door should Emma choose? She should walk through the second door. Even if dinosaurs were still around, they wouldn't be able to breathe fire. It was the correct decision. The dino turned out to be a skillfully made statue. But there was just one door leading out of the room, and it was locked too. Ah! Emma was starting to get impatient. Luckily, there was another note with a hint. There were drawings on it. A banana, a sunflower, a rainbow, and an apple. Emma thought for a while, then pressed four numbers on the panel near the door. The code was correct, and the door opened. What numbers did the girl press? One, three, seven, one. Each digit corresponds to the number of colors of the objects in the picture. Emma saw a long corridor. She'd been walking for a while when she realized that the corridor was about to split into three passageways. They were signed West, East, South. She also saw this inscription on the wall. Which corridor should she choose? Emma tilted her head and looked at the inscription upside down. This way, it read South. That's where she needed to go. Soon, the girl saw three doors on her way. On the floor, there were three keys that could open these three doors. What is the biggest number of attempts she will need to figure out the key for each door? Six, three attempts for the first key and all three doors. Two attempts for the second key and the remaining two doors. And one attempt for the third key and the last door. Emma decided to go through the left door. And guess what? She ended up in the room with the armchair again. The man was there too. He asked her, Today is Friday. You need to do something 72 days later. What day of the week will it be? Emma understood it really fast, it would be Sunday. Look, 72 days equals 10 weeks plus two days. And two days from Friday, that's Sunday. The man was getting irritated. Well, and how good are you at math? Look at this sequence. What are the next two numbers? The next two numbers should be 20 and 28. There are two groups of numbers in this sequence. 11, 14, and 17, and 19, 22, and 25. In both of them, each next number is three more than the previous one. It means that in the first group, the next number is 20, and in the second group, 28. Then, the man offered Emma a bet. He said he would put one red and one blue marble in a box. If the girl picked the blue marble, he would let her go. But if she got the red marble, she would have to stay and help him around the house for a year. Emma knew that the man was going to cheat, because why would he take a risk like that? He would probably put two red marbles instead of one red and one blue. But how can she prove it? After thinking for a while, she managed to win the bet. How did she do it? Emma picked a marble and quickly put it in her mouth without showing it to the man. The marble that remained in the box was red. According to the rules, it meant that the marble Emma had chosen was blue. The man didn't want to admit that he had tried to cheat. Okay, I'm not going to go back on my word, but here's the last riddle. If you crack it, you're free to go. How can you turn six into an odd number? Emma didn't need to think much. She removed the letter S, which left IX. That's the number 9 in Roman numerals. And this number is odd. The man could do nothing. 
he gave Emma the documents and let her go. The girl was happy. Do you think she should pursue the career of a detective? Detective Tina received an emergency call from the local museum. Someone had stolen an exclusive scarab brooch from ancient Egypt. First of all, Tina checked all security cameras. This is what she found. Can you spot the thief just by looking at these two pictures? See this guy? He's holding an open paper cup in the first image, but in the second image, the cup has a lid. The guy hid the stolen brooch in his paper cup. Detective Tina hurried to the crime scene. When the brooch disappeared, the museum security system locked all visitors inside the building. But the guards didn't find the suspected person among the visitors. How did he escape? Have you guessed? Take a look up at the ceiling. See the shoe prints on the statue? The thief climbed this sculpture and escaped through the window on the roof. Tina went to the roof to search for some clues. Can you see any? The thief left the cup on the roof. There's a coffee shop name written on it. Bright Cup. Tina can visit this place and check the security cameras. Tina arrived at the coffee shop, located just nearby the museum. Unfortunately, they didn't have security cameras, so Tina questioned the staff. Kelly, the barista, said, Sorry, I don't know this guy. I'm just trying to do my job. Mike, the manager, said, This face looks familiar, but I'm not sure where I saw him. And Phil, the guard, said, Sorry, never saw him. You can trust me. I have a perfect memory for faces. Tina knew for sure that one of them had lied. Can you spot who exactly? Kelly, look at her iPad. There's an incoming call from her boyfriend. Take a closer look at the contact photo. It's our thief. Therefore, Kelly is an accomplice in the crime. Tina told Kelly, I'm afraid we should continue this conversation at the police station. But Kelly ran away through the backyard. Tina followed her and ended up in a dark basement. She got lost and found these three cages. The first cage is covered with fire. There are huge ice cubes all over the second cage. And the third cage is full of venomous scorpions. Tina has to choose one of them to get to the surface. Can you help her choose the safest option? The cage with the ice cubes. She can get cold, but it's still safer than the other two cages. The police caught Kelly and brought her to the station. During interrogation, Kelly told Tina four facts. First of all, this guy's name is Alex. Secondly, he's my ex-boyfriend. We don't get along anymore. We went to the same college and met in history class. And finally, I don't know why he'd stolen this stupid brooch. One of the facts is false. Can you guess which one? The fourth one. Look at Kelly's tattoo. It's identical to the stolen brooch. She definitely knows something about the stolen item. Kelly confessed that the thief might be hiding in an abandoned castle site outside the city. Tina went to check it out. But anyone who wants to reach the castle should go through this tangled maze. Can you tell which one of these four paths will bring Tina to the castle? The first path leads to the pond with crocodiles. The third one leads nowhere. And the fourth way goes back to the beginning. So Tina should choose the second path. Tina entered the castle and saw a room full of ancient artifacts. She spotted the thief right away. What about you? Can you see him? This mummy is holding a cell phone. 
Alex ran away to the basement and Tina followed him. Unfortunately, the door behind her slammed shut and she got stuck. Can you help her break the code to escape? A calendar on the door says, You force heaven to be empty. If you read the sentence again, you're going to hear a seven-digit code. U, four, seven, two, B, M, T. In the next room, Tina got stuck in another trap. The creepy voice explained, If you press the right button, I'm going to let you go. But if you choose the wrong one, you'll stay here forever. You've only got one chance to escape. Good luck. Which button opens the lock? Have you guessed? She should pick the black button. This picture on the wall is a hint. The rainbow contains all colors except for black. Tina got out of the trap and entered a room full of old furniture. She noticed three odd details about this room right away. What about you? There are books in this burning fireplace, but they don't burn. Take a look at this painting on the wall. This lady's winking. And the reflection in this mirror doesn't match the room at all. Tina found Alex near these underground gates leading to an ancient underground city. He explained that the scarab brooch hid a secret key, but there are four different locks on the gates. The guys only have one attempt to choose the right one. Which lock should they pick? The fourth lock is the only perfect match for this key. The guys opened the gates and entered the city. Alex had a map, so he ran away to find the treasures and left Tina alone. She looked around and noticed a three-way road pointing to the north, west, and east. Tina didn't know where to go. Suddenly, she saw a lady. The local citizens always reply truthfully, but they answer only one question if they're talking to a stranger. What should Tina ask to figure out the right direction? She should ask, if the right direction is not the east, is it west? Here's why. There are three possible answers. One, yes, west is correct. Two, no, east is the right direction. Three, neither one nor the other. Tina should go north. Or, Tina might just ask the name of this lady and then introduce herself. This way, they won't be strangers anymore, and Tina would be able to ask as many questions as she needed. Tina went north and finally found the entrance to a cave with treasures, but the door has a combination lock. Can you help Tina figure out the code? Take a look at these figures. The number corresponds to the sum of intersection points. Therefore, she needs to calculate the number of points in the last figure. And voila! The four-digit code is solved. Inside the caves, Tina met a dragon. It said, I'm gonna let you in if you can crack my riddle. I'm gonna let you in if you can crack my riddle. I'm quite hot, but if you remove the first two letters, I become too cold. What am I? Have you guessed? The correct answer is spice. When we take away the first two letters, it turns into ice. To find the treasures, Tina has to walk through this round maze. She only has 10 seconds to choose the correct way. Can you help her out? Here's the easiest way. Tina found three doors in the center of the labyrinth. Each door leads to treasures. But each way also hides some danger. 
the first path is filled with poisonous gas. There are thousands of toads and bugs behind the second door. They crawl all over the floor and walls. And a hungry lion is hiding behind the third door. Which way should Tina choose? The second way. Although bugs and toads can be gross, they're not dangerous. Tina took the treasures and headed home. Suddenly, she met Alex. Tina decided to trick him and offered him a deal. If you manage to solve my puzzle, I'm going to give you 100% of the treasures. But if you fail, you'll get nothing and go to jail. Here's the riddle. Move just one match to point this giraffe in a different direction. Alex failed to crack this riddle. What about you? Here's the correct answer. Pretty easy, huh?